In this video, we're going to talk about predicting the products of chemical reactions. So let's start with the basics. If methane reacts with oxygen gas, what will be the products of this reaction? Now, if you can identify the type of reaction you're dealing with, it's relatively easy to predict the products. So whenever you have a hydrocarbon reacting with oxygen, it's a combustion reaction. If this reaction is carried out to completion, if you have excess oxygen, the products will always be carbon dioxide and water. And then all you need to do is balance the equation. So the number of carbon atoms are balanced on both sides. We have one carbon atom on each side. Now we do have four hydrogens on the left, two on the right. So we got to put a two in front of water. Let's put a one in front of methane. Now the last thing we need to do is balance the number of oxygen atoms. We have two oxygen atoms from the CO2 molecule and two from water. So we have a total of four oxygen atoms on the right side. So we need four on the left, therefore we need to put a two in front of O2. And now the reaction is balanced. So let's say if we have C2H5OH and if we react with oxygen gas. This is another combustion reaction, so the products will be the same, CO2 and water. And you know how to balance it, so I'll leave it up to you if you want to balance it or not. Now let's say if we react zinc with oxygen gas. What product will form in this reaction? Now, when you mix two elements together, you're going to get a combination reaction. They're going to combine and form a compound. So in this case, a compound between zinc and oxygen will have what chemical formula? Zinc has a positive 2 charge. Oxygen has a minus 2 charge. Whenever you have two ions combining, and if, they're, if they have the same charge, even though the sign is opposite, they're going to combine in a 1 to 1 ratio. So the product for this example is zinc oxide. And if you wish to balance it, all you need to do is put a 2 in front of zinc oxide and a 2 in front of zinc. And now it's balanced. So let's say if we want to react magnesium metal with nitrogen gas. What product will form in this reaction? So we're going to get a compound composed of magnesium and nitrogen, or magnesium nitride. Magnesium has a positive 2 charge. Nitride has a minus 3 charge. So when combining these two elements, it's going to be Mg3N2. And now all we need to do is just balance the chemical reaction. So we just need a 3 in front of Mg and a 1 in front of everything else. So for the sake of practice, let's look at one more example. So let's react sodium metal with elemental sulfur. Feel free to pause the video and predict the product that will form in this reaction. So we're going to get a compound between sodium and sulfur, or sodium sulfide. Sodium has a positive 1 charge. Sulfide has a minus 2 charge. So this is going to be Na2S1, or simply Na2S. Now to balance it, we need an 8 in front of Na2S. So we can have eight sulfur atoms on both sides. Now notice that we have 16 sodium atoms on the right. Eight times two is 16, so we need a 16 in front of any. And so this is how you can balance synthesis or combination reactions and how to predict the products if you have an element reacting with another element. Now what's going to happen if you have calcium carbonate and you subject it to heat. Anytime you heat a metal carbonate, a volatile component will escape. 
That volatile component is carbon dioxide gas. And it's going to leave behind a metal oxide, in this case, calcium oxide. So if we had magnesium carbonate and we add heat to it, CO2 will leave producing magnesium oxide. Now the reverse is true as well. If we were to take calcium oxide and react it with carbon dioxide, this will be a synthesis reaction. But it's different from the other synthesis reactions because we're not mixing an element with an element. We're combining two compounds. And this will form calcium carbonate. So typically, the reverse of a synthesis reaction is a decomposition reaction. So if you know the decomposition products, then you know that these two combine will just produce this if the temperature is low. Now let's say if we have a metal hydroxide and we add heat to it, what products will be produced in this reaction? If you heat up a metal hydroxide, it's going to cause water to evaporate. Once water is removed, you're going to get the metal oxide. So let's say if we have aluminum hydroxide. And if we add a lot of heat, water will leave, leaving behind aluminum oxide. Now you can balance it if you want to, but well, let's go ahead and balance it. Let's put a 2 in front of aluminum hydroxide. So now we have two aluminum atoms. So we have six oxygen atoms in total. So we need a three in front of H2O. So anytime you heat a metal hydroxide, it's going to produce water and the corresponding metal oxide. Now let's move on to single replacement reactions. Let's say if we react iron metal with copper two chloride. What products will be formed in this reaction? So iron metal is a solid and we're mixing it with an aqueous solution of copper chloride. In a single replacement reaction, the metal, Fe, will replace the other metal, copper. So Fe is going to pair up with Cl. Fe typically has a positive charge, I mean a positive 2 charge. Chloride has a minus 1 charge. So this is going to be Fe1, Cl2. So one of the products will be FeCl2. Copper is going to be displaced out of the solution as copper metal. And so that's going to be the products of the single replacement reaction. Let's work on another example. Let's say if we have aluminum reacting with nickel 2 chloride. Go ahead and predict the products of this reaction. So aluminum is going to pair up with chloride. Aluminum has a positive 3 charge. Chloride has a minus 1 charge. So the chemical formula of the product will be Al1Cl3, or simply AlCl3. And nickel is going to be displaced out of the solution as solid nickel metal. Typically, the compound nickel chloride and aluminum chloride is still dissolved in the solution. Now what about the zinc metal reacting with hydrochloric acid? Try this one. In this case, zinc is still going to pair up with chlorine the same way as aluminum paired up with the nonmetal chlorine. Now let's write the formula between zinc and chlorine. Zinc has a positive 2 charge. Chloride has a minus 1 charge. So it's going to be Zn1Cl2. Zinc is going to displace hydrogen out of the solution. And so it's going to be elemental hydrogen, which exists as a gas. So whenever you have an active metal and you react it with an acid, hydrogen gas will be produced. Now let's say if we have a nonmetal, like chlorine gas, 
reacting with an aqueous solution of sodium bromide. What's going to be the products of this reaction in this case? Chlorine, the nonmetal, is going to pair up with sodium, a metal ion. And chlorine is going to displace the other halogen, bromine, out of the solution. So when chlorine pairs up with sodium, it's going to be a 1 to 1 ratio. It's going to be Na1Cl1, or simply NaCl. And bromine is going to be displaced out of the solution as diatomic bromine, which is a liquid at room temperature. So this is going to be the reaction. If you want to balance it, just put a 2 in front of NaBr and NaCl. So whenever you have like a halogen reacting with an aqueous solution, typically the halogen will displace the other halogen out of the solution. So let me give you another example of this type of problem. So let's use bromine and sodium iodide. Bromine is going to pair up with sodium, producing sodium bromide, and it's going to displace iodide out of the solution. And iodide is a solid, I mean iodine as a pure element. And the compound is iodide, but as a pure element, it's iodine. So as you can see, the reaction is very similar. To balance it, it's going to be the same. So now you know how to predict the products of a single replacement reaction. Now let's move on to a double replacement reaction. Let's say if we have silver nitrate reacting with magnesium chloride. And these are two aqueous solutions. What will be the products of this double replacement reaction? Ag is going to pair up with Cl. Ag has a positive 1 charge. Cl has a minus 1 charge. Whenever the charges are the same, if they have the same magnitude, they're going to combine in a 1 to 1 ratio, producing AgCl. And then magnesium is going to pair up with nitrate. Magnesium has a positive 2 charge. Nitrate has a negative 1 charge. So combine it's going to be Mg1 NO3 2. Whenever you have multiple polyatomic ions in a compound you need to enclose it using parentheses. Now it turns out that nitrate is always soluble so magnesium nitrate is still dissolved in a solution. However silver chloride is insoluble so it doesn't stay dissolved in a solution, it's a solid product. Whenever you mix two aqueous solutions, and if you get a solid product, this is not just called a double replacement reaction, it's also called a precipitation reaction. Anytime you mix two aqueous solutions, and if a solid comes out of it. Now let's look at another example. What are the products in a reaction between aluminum chloride and uh, sodium sulfate. Both of these are an aqueous solution. So feel free to pause the video if you want to try this. Aluminum is going to pair up with sulfate. Aluminum has a positive 3 charge. Sulfate has a negative 2 charge. So the chemical formula is going to be Al2SO43. You just got to replace the charges with subscripts. So that's going to be one of the products. Now to get the other product, we're going to pair up sodium with chlorine. And because they have the same charge, they will combine in a 1 to 1 ratio, NaCl. Sodium chloride is soluble, so it's still dissolved in a solution. Aluminum sulfate is also soluble. If there's no change in phase, if everything remains in the aqueous solution, then technically there's no reaction 
in this problem. If no solid precipitate forms or any other new phases appear in this reaction, then it's no reaction. Now let's move on to another example. Let's react sulfuric acid, aqueous sulfuric acid, with aqueous potassium hydroxide. Go ahead and work on this problem. So it's another double replacement reaction. Hydrogen is going to pair up with hydroxide. Whenever you pair up H plus and OH minus, this will combine to form H2O. So this is a strong acid, strong base neutralization reaction, which will always produce water and salt. Now we need to pair up the potassium with the sulfate ion. So this is going to be K2SO4 times 1, or simply SO4. All alkali metals in group 1, they dissolve in water. They're very soluble. So potassium sulfate is going to be in the aqueous phase. And water is a liquid. So the fact that we have this change of phase, there is a chemical reaction occurring here. So typically, when you mix two aqueous solutions, and if you get liquid water, chances are it's an acid-base neutralization reaction. Let's try one more example. Let's mix sodium carbonate with hydrochloric acid. Sodium carbonate is going to be in the aqueous phase, and the same is true for HCl. Go ahead and predict the products of this reaction. So first, let's pair up Na and Cl. So that's just going to be sodium chloride, NaCl. And then we're going to pair up hydrogen with carbonate. So hydrogen has a plus one charge. Carbonate has a negative two charge. So initially, when you combine these two, you're going to get carbonic acid. However, carbonic acid usually doesn't stay like that at normal atmospheric pressure. It would stay in that form under high pressure, but at normal atmospheric pressure, carbonic acid typically decomposes back into water and carbon dioxide. So therefore, the products of this reaction are NaCl, H2O, and carbon dioxide. Now, NaCl is in the aqueous phase, water is a liquid, and carbon dioxide is a gas. This reaction is known as a gas evolution reaction.